Hello. Having discussed and built half and full adders, we are ready to develop cascading adders. Other common names you'll see for these types of combinational circuits are ripple adders or parallel adders. I prefer the name cascading adders because it is a beautiful and apt description of what is happening. A cascade is a series of waterfalls, like you see in the picture. There's a pool up top. When it fills up, it pours down into the next pool. When that pool fills up, it pours down into the next one, and so on. This is similar to how longhand addition works. Think of each column of addition as a pool. When we complete that column, the carryout pours over into the next column, and then each subsequent carry leads to the next column. For any one column, only three bits need to be added, the two given values and a carry in bit. As we saw last video, adding three bits is the job of a full adder. The general notation that can be used for the outline column is shown below. The three input bits are A1, B1, and C out zero. Why is it C out zero when the other variables have a subscript of one? Because it is the carry out from the next column over this is the key idea, here condensed into subscript notation. It is always the carryout of the less significant column that becomes the carry in to the next column. So what happens to the C out 1 output? It will be added to A2 and B2. And here we see that same idea in circuit form. With addition of 4-bit numbers, we need 4 separate full adders, one for each bit of the inputs. What goes into an individual adder? Let's look at one example from the middle. Two of the inputs are the A and B values, which are from external sources, but the carry in arrives internally. It is taken from the carry out of the previous full adder. A couple of tweaks to this pattern occur at the start and the finish. For the least significant column, we are guaranteed to never have a carry in. We could place a half adder here, or we could do what is shown, which is connect ground to that CN port. Ground is an electron drain, which carries a voltage of zero. In logic terms, this is false or zero, so this forces the initial carry in to always be zero. In the last full adder, we have a carry out, but no subsequent column to bring it to. Since we are working in unsigned binary, this carry out becomes the most significant bit of the final sum. So, we see that with 4-bit inputs, we create a 5-bit sum. Typically, we see logic circuits set up with inputs on the left and outputs on the right. I decided to rotate this one so we can see how it aligns with longhand addition. You can see how A0 and B0 are added in the rightmost column, and so on to the left. So, what would a numeric example look like? Given the problem 1101 plus 0110, we first need to assign the given values to the appropriate input ports. Assuming that A is the first number, then A3 is 1, A2 is 1, A1 is 0, and A0 is 1. Similarly, you can see how the B values are assigned 0, 1, 1, 0. Now we process the inputs. Can we start on the left? No, because we don't know the value for that C in yet. So we start on the right. This full adder simply sums the three input bits. So 0 plus 0 plus 1 equals 0, 1. I'm careful to say the output as two bits because I need a value for C out and S. The S value comes straight down to the output port. The C out swings around to the next full adder. Here we add the input 0 plus 1 plus 0. Again, this gives us 0, 1. The 1 comes down for the final sum. The 0 carries out to the next column. Here, 0 plus 1 plus 1 equals 1, 0. Again, bring down the sum bit and move along the C out bit. Finally, 1 plus 0 plus 1 equals 1, 0, giving us the last two bits of the output. Remember that this final C out in unsigned binary is the fifth bit of the sum. 
We designed this 4-bit adder, but we used a different process than what was taught before, which involved making a truth table, deriving equations, and then building a circuit out of gates. That procedure could have worked here just fine, but it would have been tedious. With eight input bits, the truth table would require 256 rows, and then the equations would be rather lengthy. So what we did here was take advantage of two things. First, we used a device, the full adder, for which we had a well-defined understanding. Second, we reasoned through a procedure logically, step by step, and applied a logic circuit to accomplish each step. We noticed the parallel between what we do in longhand addition and what the full adder does. Then we had to be careful to connect the appropriate ports. What if we needed an 8-bit adder? We could certainly extend the pattern we already developed. We would need one full adder for every bit in our inputs, and we simply connect each C out to the next C in. In fact, you could do this for 16, 32, 64, or any number of bits. But even better is if we take advantage of the 4-bit adder we just created. In this schematic, notice that same pattern of C out leading to C in. In this case, the C out would be the carry out from column 3, and it would become the carry in to column 4, performed at the start of the next 4-bit adder. We do need to be careful with connecting the appropriate input ports. In this less significant adder, the inputs match the labels on the devices, A0 to A0, A1 to A1, and so on. But in the more significant adder, the device stays the same, but the input names change. After A3 comes A4, and this A4 needs to feed in to the least significant port on this device. Obviously, the same pattern holds for B. Side note, I did leave off some features from the schematic, like the initial CN and the output displays, but I included the main points for the concept. Extension question, how could we build a 16-bit adder? Well, there are plenty of options. You could do it with 16 separate full adders. You could do it with four separate 4-bit adders. You could do it with two separate 8-bit adders. Or, for you brave souls out there, you could start with a truth table with 32 input bits. That's over 4 billion rows. Thank goodness for devices. Let's examine these cascading adders in the simulator. On this first screen, we have the various options for a 4-bit adder. For each of these, we will show the example of 12 plus 6 decimal. Input A will equal decimal 12, or binary 1100. Input B will equal decimal 6, or binary 0110. In this top example, we are using a half adder for the least significant column. This eliminates the possibility of an initial carry in. Plugging in the given values, we see the final sum of 10010, reading from most significant to least significant bit. This equals decimal 18, which is good news. One neat thing we can do is select show values, which allows us to see the logic values on each wire. Especially valuable in this example is seeing the value of the carry bit moving down to the next full adder. In this next example, we replace the half adder with a full adder, but then we connect ground to the first carry-in. As discussed in the slides, this forces the initial carry-in to be equal to zero, so it works the same as if we had a half adder here. The disadvantage of using a full adder here is a slight increase in hardware cost and propagation delay. There are more gates underneath. But an advantage is that if you have three full adders, you likely have a fourth one available as well. It is nice to use the same device repeatedly. The final example uses the exact same schematic, but now the initial carry-in is connected to a switch rather than ground. If we were just adding 4-bit numbers, then the switch would always be set to zero. But the switch allows us flexibility. If I had a situation that required an initial carry-in, I could include it with this setup. Notice how adding in that extra value of 1 increases the output by 1. This flexibility is necessary if using a 4-bit adder to build an 8-bit adder. Now, on the screen, we see that device symbol for a 4-bit adder 
with an initial carry in. Notice how easy it is to interpret this addition in hexadecimal, made possible because we have four bit inputs. For example, 5 plus 3 equals 8. If I also add a carry in, that becomes 1 plus 5 plus 3 equals 9. Let's check out 11 plus 8. In hexadecimal, 11 is represented by B. The result shows 1, 3. That is not 13. We are reading this in hexadecimal. That leading 1 carries a weight of 16. So, 1, 3 in hexadecimal is equal to 19 in decimal which is what 11 plus 8 should equal. Now for our final circuit of the video, an 8-bit adder, built from two 4-bit adders. We can see the carryout of the less significant adder feeding into the carry-in of the next adder. Let's see how to read the inputs and outputs with an example. In hex, 2, 3 plus 5, 7 equals 7a. As set up here, the inputs are ordered left to right. The outputs need to be read from bottom to top. Could we reorganize? Certainly, as long as we are careful to identify the correct order of digit significance. As one final example, in hex, FF plus 37 equals 136. Note how the carryout works as the most significant digit in the output. I hope this video gave you insight into how cascading adders work specifically as well as how device symbols and abstraction work in general.